okay, every pair, okay, it's every, but they only make, they don't even, they, um, they make 3D glasses, they make sunglasses, they make optical glasses, they do the whole line, but he told me what the price is on the glasses, mm -hmm. yeah, which, you're getting screwed, folks. I mean, really, royally. So, so when they add a five dollar premium to your movie, it's to pay for. Um, it, you're overpaying on the glasses because they, they ain't paying five dollars a pair of glasses. Mm -hmm. You know, they figure they're gonna lose. I mean, we did see kids walking out with glasses. Well, you know, part of it is is you can tell that it costs them, but it's not as much as you would think because. They aren't really, there's a person standing there, but it's like they're not really paying attention and don't really yeah. care. Yeah, go, go over to the Toy Story shooting gallery over at California Adventure if you have an opportunity to go to the park. You'll see passive glasses that basically are very inexpensive plastic glasses. They're just people, things you put on your head. I, I'm telling you, I mean, if you're a consumer, because we're on the consumer, but do you, would you rather have a cheaper set of glasses and a lower price are a more expensive set of glasses and a higher price. Well, that's of course, a, the latter. Yeah. Especially if you're stylish. Yeah. Say no. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. No. We actually have glasses that run about 160 dollars a piece. We've got lots of glasses that run 140, 160 dollars a piece. But we do. We actually we do a lot of 3D stuff. So, uh, and we are reviewing. We are starting our process to start reviewing a lot of 3D movies as they come out now. So we actually having our own glasses. It's better, but we're just we're basically we're discerning that all 3D glasses by all manufacturers are not the same. Mm -hmm. You have narrow glasses and bigger glasses. We noticed that on IMAX the bigger glasses really work well, and on the 3D movies the bigger glasses really work well on color. The smaller glasses work better on definition. Mm -hmm. So there's no there, it's just like you almost have to get bifocals or something. Mm -hmm. So, because, I mean, that's what I was doing at times, I'd have the, I'd have the uh, narrow Gunner glasses on and the bigger Marchand above them, i go like this. And you can see the difference between the two sets of glasses. There's a, there's a distinct difference between the two sets. They both work exactly as promised, but each one does something a little, there's a little niche that one does better than the other one. But, um, it, it, it's from a consumer point of view, though, I mean, do you want, they're, they're bitching up a storm, they're saying that, well, that the Pirates didn't make as much money as it should have made because of 3D. Well, in a sense they're right, in a sense they're not right. There's the problem, uh, the 3D added five dollars more per ticket, but the majority of the theaters that is playing it are not 3D. Mm -hmm. No matter what they say, well, this Avatar made a billion two hundred thousand dollars. Million two, one billion two hundred million dollars in 3D. No, it didn't. I think like 65 percent of the theaters in the world are not 3D. Actually, it's probably higher than that. Yeah. Because percent, doesn't the U.S. have more 3D screens than anywhere yeah. except? Oh, I don't know about China. I know. Well, China, China has really 3D, big 3D. 3D is big in China, uh, but because they tend to manufacture a lot of stuff. But the majority of the theaters carrying a 3D movie carry it in 2D. Uh, because uh, they don't, they're not set up for a 3D. Okay, 3D works best like this. They, it does not work best when you're going like that. So uh, the theaters are designed like this, so they can get as many seats in. Whereas if you do a theater like this, which is basically like more, more like compact, IMAX, more compact, where, where, the, where for example the seats instead of being like at this angle, they're more like at this angle. Yeah, and uh, it, it makes for a better thing. But the trick is. It's all about, they have totally, it's just, they have totally forgotten the consumer when they're designing the movies. Uh, it's why, okay, people, I mean, they pure as bitched up a storm about 3 being, uh, 3 being uh, Alice after the fact. Ah, that's, that's one of the highest grossing movies ever. They bitched up a storm about 3 being after the fact with, um, with uh, Jason and the Argonauts. God made a ton of movies. Well, you know, there's a, part of it is there's a lot of movies that are done 3D after the fact because if you're doing blue screen and a green screen yeah. anyway, yeah, right, it makes no difference. It's yeah. it, it's just easier. See, uh, well, okay, I mean, okay, here you've got say we're doing you know the uh, sword fighting thing. You know, we've got Johnny Depp. You know, like this. This it you know. Does it make any difference whether you're seeing it, whether it's being photographed in 3D or whether it's being photographed in 2D in back screen? Because you know what they're going to do after they get done with this? They're going to put the stuff in behind him that didn't exist there, it's on the green screen, 
and they're going to back street back door the entire sequence. He's basically done this in 3D, and then all of a sudden this is done. This is just nothing but a big blue screen and green screen behind us. They do in their artist effects, and then you know what they do, folks. They rephotograph it all. And after it's been rephotographed, that you know they rephoto they basically back screen it when they're rephotographing it to make it all 3D and match. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, all of a sudden though, you'll see because you can tell when it, when it's been redone because this is no longer in focus back here. Mm -hmm. It's this fuzzy. So, I <laughs> know it's just I was grumping about that. I'm watching that thing and. I was grumping enough that I pulled a muscle in my leg because I, I, I saw what was going on and I, I sort of moved too quick and I really Oh, is that what happened? Oh, yeah. I mean, I said... Because I'm sitting there and all of a sudden he goes, oh. I, I yanked the hamstring because I'm sitting there watching what is going on behind me. You know, we said this was second. The first movie we saw, there is just, I mean, you talk about... Well, they sheep dashed out on the titles. I mean, the company did unbelievable, beautiful titles up front. They did the, the end titles and then they give you the credits. And the credit, a digital artist, and it's digital artist and digital. We're not talking one set of digital artists. We're talking digital artists from you know, different countries, from different studios. Oh, from different, different every, jobs. Everything. I mean, we're talking. There's just there were far more digital artists there than there were people that were credited for being in the movie. God, it was by multiples. I mean, we are talking. I mean, I I don't. I think at one point one 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 section had I uh, I counted 25 this direction. You know, here in this direction. And then you multiply that times that, which means there had to be like a hundred or so people doing digital work on the one section. Mm. And I think every piece that they did was different, had a different set of digital artists to do the movie. So, but a lot of what you're seeing in the Paris, okay, they shot in Puerto Rico because they wanted the shot where they got the cave where you can come down into the cave and you see the big light coming down. They shot in Hawaii because they wanted the the backgrounds and they wanted the lava fills and they shot in England. Mm -hmm. And basically those are three different sets of people. Plus they used Singapore, they used India. I could tell from the Indian names that they were used, that they were in Bollywood doing stuff. It didn't say it, but the Ranshur Rappur. Mm -hmm. And it could have been Singapore, but I don't think so because the one in Singapore said Singapore. Mm -hmm. But they had this whole bunch of people like deed up. You know They were Indian names. A lot of Indian names. So I think they they basically backroomed a lot of it in India. They did it in they did it in Shanghai, Singapore, United States. They did it in England. They did it in uh, I'm just room you know one of the the uh, Russian satellites. They did the stuff. So um, you know but it's all over the map on a digital artist. But since you know if you're gonna do it, then don't shoot the bloody thing in 3D to begin with. You've got to give people a better experience. Well, they say, well, if you don't have a true 3D camera, you can't go swish panning. Uh, that's what people don't like. They do not like the guy, you know, Johnny Depp has got the you know, scene where he's circling around the guys, you know, he's swinging around them, first of all, and it, basically he's a blur going through. A blur. Well, maybe they like, they like that blur. No, they don't like that blur. The audience basically, I've seen... Um, we, we saw uh, every 3D movie I have seen has been out of focus in whole sections of it because of the camp and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. It's out of focus. I was taught, uh, I mean, I, I, I actually did go to film school too. I grew up in the industry, but I went to film school. And uh, my instructor told people, you know, he would tell people in the reviews as they're, as they're getting their, they have to do their film project, he said, if you were in a business, I'd have fired you. Because he said you don't put things that are out of focus on the screen because, and uh, I mean, I had, Jack L. Warner came into one of our film classes once, and he, and I also had things, we had, uh, I had a lot of, a lot of big shots of his, Orson Welles, but Orson Welles, well, ladies and gentlemen, I have never seen such a big a bunch of crap as I have ever seen in my life. Does any one of you in this student group understand you must keep the camera in focus because Somebody out in that seat is paying for what you're doing, and if they don't like what you're doing, you don't get paid, you don't get paid, you no longer work. And he's basically, you know, because so many people in the films were, they were basically being artistic and they'd throw things, they defocus the camera. Or they would do well, something. Well, people do that because they think they're being artistic. They think they're being artistic. No, another one. Uh, if you're going to be artistic, take the clothes off the young lady. They call that art. 
Yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's, that's true. I mean, that, that basically, it's artistic if you defocus a naked woman. It's not artistic if you defocus an action sequence. You know, like you defocus the police car. We had one of the people shot. Him. They had a guy in the campus, which they were not supposed to do. They got a police car come into the scene, and as the police car is coming, campus police, they defocus the picture. And the guy, one of the, my, my instructor was one of the people from, you know, who worked for Cesar. We just said, uh, what was that? Mm -hmm. He said, well, we were being artistic. He said, well, you, you, you just blew the whole scene by throwing it out of focus. They're throwing things out. They're trying to, they're charging people, uh, you know, like 30, you know, $40 to go see a 3D movie for two people. Just see picture, film, film this out of focus. Well, let's see, for two people to see the three, it, it is by the time you get oh, yeah. one large popcorn and one soda pop and you buy your tickets, it's $50. It's $50 for two people. It's 100 They say it's $100 for a family to go see a 3D movie. And this is not, you give the people the best possible experience. You don't give it, it's just like the people, Rob Marshall was a good director, but he's not a 3D director. The cinematographer was basically Johnny Depp's cinematographer with Burton. And they're not 3D people. So they, they, they had a 3D consultant, but my guess is they didn't listen to the 3D consultant. Otherwise, you would not have done swish panning. Mm -hmm. You cannot swish pan with a 3D camera. It does not work. This Panasonic camera will not even allow you to do a swish pan, which is how bad it is. It's designed into the software. You cannot do it. I mean, I, uh, I'm i in, okay, I have, the, I have the baby 3D in the pace car at the, um, over at the Long Beach Grand Prix. Every time we go like this around, you know, like 100 miles an hour on a corner, <laughs> the camera just, you were panning too quick. And then as soon as we straightened out and went forward, it stabilized. Mm -hmm. But it just, it's just like the camera stops and then starts up again. It doesn't say you were panning too quick, it just stops. But what they've done, like I said, I can tell a converted camera from a true 3D camera. This is true 3D, this one will not swish pan and you're in focus all the time. A converted 3D camera will throw you, like I said, it will defocus you here if you want that back there. If you want me here, you defocus it here. Through 2 3D is depth of field. You are always in, like I said, if this room, this room is um, 40 plus foot long. If I was to go, you know, if we were to turn the camera on, I would still be in focus 40 foot away. And if she was in the picture up front, she would still be in focus. So it makes 3D neat. You don't get out of focus with true 3D, but they want you to do close-ups. Well, what you do is you move the camera in and you shoot the second set of pictures closer and then you call it intercutting. Mm -hmm. Every, every, all the film students would tell you, you do this shot, you do this shot, you do this shot. And then you'll do that shot from maybe from a three cam. They, they do three cameras. They'll do it from here, they'll do it from there, and they'll do it from there. Sometimes they do it from there. Some of the people are famous for doing multi-camera shots. I mean, they've got them all over the place. And some people, you know, for the you know for the extra reels nowadays, they're shooting the camera. They basically you know, have a hidden camera from the back. So the hidden camera from the back films all what's going on, and they do that as the extras on your on your mm -hmm. DVDs. But you do cuts. Like I said, the Johnny Depp thing, I'm guessing the direct, the, the editor got tired of So he did cut, 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 cut. And then I'm guessing Rob Marshall didn't like that cut, cut, cut because he didn't say that. He went back to whoosh, 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 whoosh. You don't do that. That is not filmmaking. I mean, they can piss up a storm at me, but then I got, they, they pissed at me over when I told one of the people over at Disney about Tron. I worked on the original Tron. It didn't, it was an artist concept thing. It didn't work then. The Neutron didn't work because they screwed up the Neutron. Well, you know, the, the 3D on Pirates was much better than on Tron. Yeah, far better on Tron. But the Tron basically said Tron had 2D and 3D components together at the same time. Mm -hmm. It says True D Photography on it. Look at the credits. Mm -hmm. And Tron was basically, uh, you know, a lot of, oh, there was a